legal tea coming in hot. (laughs) The Tati Westbrook lawsuit gives us a lot to talk about. I have the entire filing document, the entire complaint that was filed in Santa Monica, California, and we are going to go through it page by page and break down what it is, what it says, what it means, what can happen from here, and what this type of a legal process even looks like anyway. And and we're going to spill some tea. There's tea in this. It was filed, I think, with that intent that we would be talking about it. So there's definitely some stuff in there that maybe doesn't need to be there, but as dishies, you are new here. I'm Emily D. Baker. I'm the badass lawyer, legal commentator, host of the popular Get Legit Law and Shit podcast. I break down the legal topics, (laughs) the legal shit that you want to talk about in regard to the stories that we are all talking about. And I pull back the legal so that you can understand what is going on. And that is from everything from politics, the election, what's going on with the Senate, to things like Kanye West's music industry contracts, to things like this lawsuit with Tati Westbrook. And I got to be honest, legal tea is just kind of fun. It's not going to be fun for the parties involved. It's more fun for us to talk about because it's less consequential to our lives. This is very consequential to the lives of those involved. I'm also a big fan of the cursy words. So headphones are advised. I am going to try because I know that Tati has a younger audience. I am going to try to rein in the cursy words on this, but it it does it it does happen. I even have I never film with a candle, but this is my afternoon tea candle and it just felt right. <laughs> it just it just felt right to talk about tea. And I am going to say Look, I've been a lawyer for over 15 years. I spent 10 years as a deputy district attorney in the county of Los Angeles. I have been involved in civil. I worked for civil judges before I became a district attorney. Um, I have owned businesses. I do business formations. I am a business consultant. I have done partnership formations. I have seen partnerships go shitty. For the parties involved, this sucks. Like for everyone involved, this is high stress. This is sleepless nights. This is that disgusting feeling in the pit of your stomach. This is awful for the parties involved. For us, we're going to see what we learn about Dramageddon. We're going to see what we learn about the way Tati's businesses are structured. But I just want to keep in mind that for the parties involved, this really does, lawsuits like this suck. They suck and they take forever. And I think part of why this suit was filed with so much tea and interest and little tidbits in it, um, my opinion, (laughs) was to maybe embarrass Tati a little bit and shame them a little bit into dealing with settling. It does say in this lawsuit that the plaintiff in this case, the person filing the suit has made demands, their demands have been ignored. So this is kind of like the nuclear option where they're just like, we're bombing it we're just going to we're just going to blow it up like the relationships already gone south with this business partner so we're just we're throwing bombs and that's exactly what this lawsuit does for those of you who are like WTF who is Tati Westbrook Tati Westbrook at Glam Life Guru is a longtime YouTuber she has been a YouTuber for what like 10 years um she was part of the James Charles Jeffrey Star Shane Dawson beauty crew and really got very involved with that crew of friends was friends with James Charles and then James Charles wanted Coachella better Coachella tickets and did a swipe up ad for Sugar Bear Hair, which is referenced in this lawsuit. Sugar Bear Hair is a company that sells like gummy vitamins that work heavily, like are are advertised heavily by influencers. Like you'll see everyone from the Kardashians to whoever, whoever on Instagram, all the Instagram models with their little like Sugar Bear Hair, it's a vitamin. Mm. Tati also has a line of vitamins that's a competitor to Sugar Bear Hair. And James Charles did a sugar bear hair like swipe up ad promoting one of their vitamins and Tati lost her mind about it because they were supposed to be friends and he was promoting this competitor of her direct business. And then she filmed the bi sister video, which allegedly 
YouTube asked her to take down because shit got so crazy over that video. And she talks about this in her like why I did it video that's still up. The bi sister video is not on her channel. I don't know if it's still up on other channels. Any drama channel on the YouTube that covers beauty influencers, you can find discussion of this. I love me some Peter Mon. Aunt Frodite, who's the pop culture psychic, has also talked about this on his channel. Fascinating stuff. But if you want the whole full backstory of that, the drama channels and the commentary channels covered it. Plug for Peter Mon. I like Peter Mon. Peter, if you ever watch my videos, hi. <laughs> I love your channel. Anyway, the a whole thing started with the Sugar Bear hair. She did the Bye Sisters video. James lost like 3 million subscribers in like two days. I remember watching this all go down. And I'm like, oh, Taji dropped bombs. Like she cried through the whole thing. She was just like, you know, this friend has betrayed me. Mind you, Tati is an adult woman in her 30s. James Charles at the time was what, like 18, 19? James still acts very much like a teen. But if you can't be a douchebag when you're a teenager, like that's when you're growing and learning. And so for me, it was a rough, it was rough to watch. But she accused James of being a sexual predator and some other things leveraged some pretty heavy accusations. James lost a substantial amount of followers and kind of went underground for a while. So did Tati. Like then the fallout was huge. Uh, Jeffree Star got involved. There were like videos and competing videos and apology videos. And uh, it, James filmed a video and he was on tour in Australia and like his, he was supposed to have a tour in the U S and that fell apart. Like it, it had business repercussions and then all of it just stopped. I don't know if legal was involved behind the scenes um, or if they all just did a mutual like stand down, but I don't think Tati anticipated when she filmed that video, what a massive bomb it was for the beauty community on YouTube. And this lawsuit for me gives some context to that because she had promised business associates that she had this squad of friends that were going to promote her vitamins. And that's why it was going to be so successful. So not only was her, were her feelings hurt by James Charles, but potentially her business as well. And she lashed back out hardcore. So let's just dive into this lawsuit. All judgment aside, let's just, you're like, girl, I came here for the legal tea and you're still talking. Yeah, fair point. I am still talking. Let's jump into it. This was filed in Santa Monica. These are the parties involved. We'll talk about the parties more in a moment. Clark Swanson is the business associate who filed this lawsuit. Let's see if we can make this a little bit bigger. Um, and he's filing this lawsuit on behalf of himself as a person. That's what individually means. And he's suing on behalf of Halo Beauty Inc. because he is one of the managing members, owners of Halo Beauty Inc. He is also suing on behalf of Swanson Global Enterprises, which owns a part of Halo. And that company is suing on its own and is suing on behalf of Halo Beauty Partners, LLC, a Nevada corporation. There are a fuck ton of corporations involved in this suit. And we don't have all the information we need to see how they're all connected, but we have enough to make some reasonable connections. All right. So Clark, I almost called him Chuck. I don't know why Clark is bringing this suit as an individual on behalf of Halo Beauty Inc. as a company. And then on behalf of Halo Beauty Partners against Halo Beauty Inc. So Halo Beauty Inc. suing Halo Beauty Inc. Yes, kind of. Um, so against Halo Beauty Inc. California, Halo Beauty Inc. Nevada, Halo Beauty Partners LLC, Nevada, Tatiana Westbrook as a person, so Tati individually, James Westbrook individually, Tati Halo Inc., a Washington company, Tati Cosmetics Inc., a Washington corporation, but doesn't bring up um, TB Co. LLC, which is the company that is behind Tati Beauty. So TBC, where is TBC? TBC is owned by, it seems, by James and Tati. It is a Delaware corporation registered in California. Let me pull up the other one. It's a Delaware corporate corporation registered in California. And this TB Co. LLC is a cosmetics company that is the back part. And this is between Laura Nelson, not sure, and Tati Westbrook. But this is the 
base company behind Tati Beauty. So when you go to um, tatibeauty.com in all of their privacy policies and stuff, it lists TB Co as the holding company. So it's interesting to me that TB Co is not lumped into this. It doesn't mean they won't be added later. Okay, over here the, with the case information, this is for breach of fiduciary duty, negligence, gross negligence, fraudulent inducement, breach of contract, breach of the duty of good faith and fair dealing, promissory estoppel, unjust enrichment, aiding and abetting, breaches of fiduciary duty, aiding and abetting, the breach of duty and good faith and fair dealing, and conversion. So these are all kind of thick civil complaints. We will get to the complaint at the end. The complaint here, these these charges, if you will, are the different civil obligations that were breached. So these are the civil duties that were breached. If it was a criminal complaint, you would see like, you know, robbery and, and, you know, sales of drugs and those kinds of things. So these are the civil charges in a civil complaint. If you've never seen a civil complaint before, they're demanding a jury trial, though it doesn't mean that they can't later waive that demand. In California, you need to specifically state if a jury trial is demanded, and then you will have to pay jury fees out front when you file stuff saying, I'm holding space for a jury trial. Pre-COVID jury trials in California were backed up for years. Post-COVID jury trials in California are going to be backed up forever forever. COVID has gridlocked the superior court system in LA County, which is why I think there's so much like tea in here to force a settlement because eventually what's going to happen is this lawsuit gets filed. The there's a time limit for these companies to respond. So Halo Beauty Inc. has to respond. Halo Beauty Inc. Nevada has to respond. Halo Beauty Partners has to respond. James and Tati individually have to respond. Tati Cosmetics has to respond. All of those companies have to respond. They will likely file an extension to respond and they will reach out to the defense attorney and be like, what can we do to resolve this? They'll tell the judge we're in talks to resolve. Can we put off filing a response? Once they file a response, then the process of gathering evidence, it's called discovery, but the process of gathering evidence begins and the sides ask for different documents from each other, access to different things. And that process can be very extensive. Then they'll start the process of doing depositions where you sit down and somebody's like, you did this, say you did it. I mean, that's not exactly how depositions go, but you know, <laughs> they normally start with what's your legal name. And then they go into, but didn't you do this and verify that this is true? So a deposition happens before you ever get to a trial. So in a civil suit, those are kind of the general parts before you would ever sit down at a jury trial. Everything in this complaint is alleged. Yes, it's alleged on information and, com and belief. It's a verified complaint. So Clark Swanson signs us at the end saying this shit's true. But again, this is Clark Swanson's belief that this shit is true. It hasn't been proven in court. These are their allegations. It's a, you did this to me, me. That's what this complaint is. And the thing you did broke these different rules. That's the breach of fiduciary duty. The, the charges, the complaints broke these different rules. The summary of the lawsuit is where all of the, the facts live. <laughs> And they start out with, they start out with bombs. Like this lawsuit's caused by the defendant's greed. Clark's like, hey, Tati, James, you're, you're greedy MFers and I am pissed about it because you cut me out of the deal, which is where we're going to get to with this. Um, Tati was one of the first and most successful YouTube beauty influencers in history. Like Tati's so great. Um, Together with her new husband, James Westbrook, they planned a nutritional supplements company to split 50-50 with Clark, who is an old friend and colleague of James Westbrook. Um, the Westbrooks, before the business started, so before the Halo Beauty Vitamins launched, the Westbrooks said to Clark, yo, we don't want to do this 50-50 thing, which means Tati and James own 50 and Clark own 50. Clark's alleging that they induced him to give up that 50% share in Halo Beauty, which was a underlying company at the time, and that he would get a third, James would get a third, 
Tati would get a third. But he's saying that the Westbrooks promised that Halo Beauty would have all other launches that Tati did. So Halo Beauty would launch anything else that Tati did. Color cosmetics, skincare, perfume, whatever it is, it would all go under Halo. And that's really the basis of this because as we know, Tati launched a eyeshadow palette under Tati Beauty and then that blendiful thing that seemed like it was kind of a flop. I don't think anybody really dug it. Like it didn't seem to have the wow that the Tati Beauty palette had. So Tati launched Tati Beauty separate from Halo. And that's where the beef comes in here is that he took less from the Halo Beauty company, took a third instead of 50%, so that all the rest of the launches, and we get into some of the money that's alleged made in these launches, that all the other money in the launches would come through Halo Beauty, through this corporate enterprise. And that's, he's saying, that's why he gave up his 50% interest in Halo Beauty, because he was promised these things. And then he said, um, the Westbrooks got greedy. Instead of honoring their agreement and honoring the fiduciary duties to Halo Beauty, which we'll get to in a minute, they cut a separate deal and launched a cosmetics product, a color palette, which is so interesting to me because it sounds like she's launching paints. Like it's a color cosmetics palette or an eyeshadow palette, but whatever. I took issue with that. <laughs> Uh, future launches and makeup, cosmetics, accessories, fragrances were planned separately and without Halo Beauty participating. As a result, Mr. Swanson Clark is alleging that Clark and Halo Beauty have been robbed. Here's the thing about fiduciary duty. We're going to take just a second. A fiduciary duty is a legal obligation to another individual or entity. So if you are the owner of a company in the U.S., corporations have corporate personhood. So they're their own thing, but you owe them a legal duty to do what's in their best interest. If you're the board of directors, if you're one of the owners, member managers. So it's a legal obligation to act in the best interest of the entity. So a lot of what's alleged here is that Tati as an owner manager of Halo Beauty owes a fiduciary legal responsibility to do what's in the best interest of Halo. And splitting off into Tati Beauty is not in the best interest of Halo. It undercuts Halo Beauty. And that's why there's this breach of duty to the company, which ultimately is going to be up for a jury to decide if that was a breach in her duty, depending on how Halo Beauty was formed, what Halo Beauty was formed for. I see an argument that, look, Halo Beauty was always formed to be a vitamins and, and um, supplements company. It was never formed to be a full beauty company, but also it's not called Halo Supplements or Halo Nutrition. It's called Halo Beauty. So it's an interesting point. We'll get on with the continued inflammatory language. <laughs> Halo Beauty, as a result, hold on, hold on, we're going <clears> to... <throat> As a result, Mr. Swanson and Halo Beauty have been robbed of the benefits of the agreement with the Westbrooks, and the Westbrooks continue to profit from the agreement that they never honored. It's a very strong language. And this is what a lot of the like puffery is in a lawsuit. It's saying, you suck. Like the whole point of this is like, eh, you suck. And there's no way the attorneys filing this didn't know because everything I'm referencing today and showing you today is publicly available. You don't have to be an attorney to go get it. You can go get it if you know how to research it. I, with 15 years of legal experience, am a very, very seasoned internet stalker. I know how to find shit, but this is all publicly available information. We're going to skip jurisdiction and venue because jurisdiction and venue is like blah, blah, blah. California is the right place to hear the case, blah, blah, blah. LA County is the right case to right place to hear the case. The only thing I thought was interesting in this is that this lawsuit was just filed. Um, where's the filing date? I'm gonna have to pull it up. This was just, just filed 1020. So what, nine days ago that this was filed and just uploaded. And it's still alleging that Tati and James live in Los Angeles. Um, but it seems from social media that they have maybe moved to Washington state and they do have companies that they own in Washington state. So this goes in talking about Clark and he's an accomplished businessman and look at how great Clark is. Clark knows a whole bunch of shit. Yay, Clark. Clark holds one third the voting share in Halo Beauty because he's a one third owner. He's also the CFO and one of the three directors of Halo Beauty Inc. 
he is the sole shareholder of Swanson Global Enterprises Nevada, and it looks like Swanson Global owns a 33% interest in Halo Beauty Partners LLC. So that means Halo Beauty Partners is here, and then other companies are the members of Halo Beauty Partners Inc. To really break down how that works, we would need all the membership agreements because we've got Halo Beauty Inc. and Halo Beauty Partners LLC. And how those two play together, we will get into a little bit, but without all the operating agreements, it's it's a lot to parse. So it looks like there's a one-third interest in Halo Beauty Partners LLC and that each individual's underlying company owns that interest. And then there's also the Halo Beauty Inc. And Clark as an individual, Tati as an individual, and James as an individual all own that. It's probably more detail than you need, but your girl likes to be thorough and it's interesting shit to me. Um, so getting into Tati, known as a YouTube celebrity with millions of regular viewers. Um, and this just breaks down who she is, what her channel is about, I like that they don't talk about it now. When Halo Beauty launched, her regularly posted videos were generating on average of 27 million views per month, according to Social Blade. I love that Social Blade is coming in now as like verified metrics. Um, and Tati identifies herself on social media as the CEO of Tati Beauty and Halo Beauty. Tati holds a third of the shares of Halo Beauty Inc. She is the CEO and directors of Halo Beauty Inc. It still says she resides in LA County. We don't know if that's that's on information and belief like they think that's where she is. Then it gets into who James is, her husband. But this stuff is not super necessary for this lawsuit. Like the character assassination stuff on James, I think, and I just wrote a note, I think this was just to piss them off. And it goes into the fact that he's been sued before, the cases he's been sued for, the fact that there was family drama over his deceased mother's home, which is just rude. And then the fact that he had been convicted of drug crimes. No, look, the thing is, there are no case numbers after this and no proof of those allegations. I think it's really just... A, to smear them, and B, to piss them off so that at least they'll make a phone call and start the process of talking. Not the tactic I necessarily would take, but then again, I'm not the attorney that's been hired to do this because this is really leveraging, I mean, leveraging embarrassment at this point. This is like leveraging public shaming to try to move this case forward. And I get Clark's probably pissed too because it seems like this partnership um, was maybe not flushed out in the detail it should have been. And that's where some of this went wrong. I would love to see the documents underlying all of this to really break it down, but we've got what we've got. And this is what we've got. Like you get what you get and you don't get upset. <laughs> this is what we've got for the legal team. So it goes into what Haley beauty, halo beauty Inc is that it's now a Nevada corporation. Halo beauty Inc owns 1% of Halo Beauty Partners. It seems like Halo Beauty Partners is the holding company of all of this, which means that the money from Halo Beauty Inc. goes up into Halo Beauty Partners and then distributed out to the owners of Halo Beauty Partners. That's so that if Halo Beauty Inc. gets sued, the money's already moved out to a holding company and then it can be redistributed. Nothing uncommon about that, nothing shady about that. That's just layers of corporations are not uncommon. I have a older video about the layers of Jaclyn Hills corporations, like layer after layer after layer of corporation owning corporation. And it's to make it harder to get to the base person. So it all of these layers of corporations, if you get an eyeshadow and it makes your eye blow up from an allergic reaction from a bad ingredient or an ingredient that wasn't listed and you sue Halo Beauty Inc., you can really only sue up to what the company has. And then there's like another company, another company, and another company, and then the person at the end of that. But you can't get to their personal assets because there's all this other stuff that comes before it. So <laughs> it's just getting into the fact that these are companies owned by companies, owned by companies, owned by individuals. Haley Beauty Partners Inc. is member managed by Swanson Global 
Tati, Halo, and Halo Beauty. So there are three companies that each have a one-third interest in Halo Beauty Partners, LLC, the holding company. And this continues to go on to the different corporations we're dealing with. So Swanson Global, which is Clark's company, is one of the owners of Halo Beauty Partners. Tati Halo is one of the owners of Halo Beauty Partners. And then Halo Beauty is one of the owners. Tati Halo is a Washington State company. Um, Halo Beauty is a California company. Tati Cosmetics is a Washington company. Companies on companies. <laughs> Tati Cosmetics is the company that filed for the trademarks for Tati Beauty. Those seem to have lapsed. That's a whole separate video because there's a lot going on here. And I imagine with all of this coming that um, Tati and James are trying to figure out what the next steps are for these companies. And I'm sure the business partners in the Tati Cosmetics world are trying to figure out what the next steps are for them too. So let's get into the dispute. Um, Tati, James, and Clark decided that they were going to get into the um, vitamin business. Tati offered that she would market it through her YouTube channel and kind of be the face of the product. They agreed to do something called Booty Booty beauty booster though if you've got a booty booster it sounds like a fun product beauty booster was the original for halo the original title and that it was owned 50 percent by mr swanson and then 50 percent by the westbrooks together 25 percent for each of them he gets into their credit history and is just like yeah this here's t on this he alleges that they have a poor credit history, including a personal bankruptcy. This is just personal tea that I imagine is embarrassing to have out there. Um, and so they relied on Clark's personal credit to secure lending for the Halo Beauty Company. That could all be handled within the documents that they're doing and within the partnership agreement of these businesses. Here's what confuses me. Clark used his personal credit to lease James Westbrook a Maserati Gran Turismo worth $200,000 for his daily driving car. Why in the fuck would you do that? Like, what possible purpose does you renting your or leasing your friend a Maserati have to do with anything? And what's it have to do with this lawsuit? Not much. <laughs> Again, other than spilling everybody's personal business in this lawsuit and perhaps trying to bolster how deeply involved Clark was as the business partner and how this entity wouldn't have taken off without them. But the car is completely irrelevant to all of the tea here. It just makes all of us go, but why though? Like why, why would you lease someone a $200,000 car? Mm hmm Okay, so this gets into the development of Halo Beauty and that Mr. Swanson was the one who did all the research on it. He's the one with the background. He's the one that trademarked the things. He, Mr. Mr. Clark did the things he alleges. The Westbrooks, he said, did very little because they have no proven business skills. Rude. But that's what they're alleging. Um, Tati's business experience is curating YouTube content and then disses her work history saying, but she only worked like retail at cosmetic sales counter and was a part-time actress and model. Uh, I don't love the downplaying of what it takes to be a creator, but again, this is a lawsuit from the plaintiff's perspective. It's, this is why lawyers are difficult to deal with. Cause it's just like rude. It's just like, uh, I mean, she's just a YouTuber. Clark did everything. That's what this, that's what this gets into. So then the Westbrooks persuade, this is getting into the T of the Westbrooks persuading Clark to reduce his shares of the company in exchange for the commitment that Halo Beauty is going to launch all of the shit. Halo Beauty is going to launch anything that Tati does is going under Halo Beauty is what Clark is alleging. And this was in and around 2017. They filed another trademark for Halo Beauty. The name was changed in 2017 from the original name into Halo Beauty. 
there was a meeting in Marina del Rey, California. The Westbrooks asked Clark to re-envision Halo Beauty as the company that was the global all-inclusive brand for Tati, which is probably why the name is Halo Beauty and not Halo Supplements or Halo Wellness. Just saying, it the name lends itself to more than just vitamins. Like, what do you think? What do you, I want to know your opinion on that. Does it feel, does the name Halo Beauty, because they changed it. Remember, we've got the original name, the Inside Out Beauty Labs and the Beauty Booster. So those are the original names. Um, Inside Out Beauty Labs LLC was the original company name. And then Beauty Booster was, I think, what they were intending to call the supplements. And that that it was going to be really beauty from the inside out, right? That was, I think, something that she said when she talked about Halo. The Tati and James went to Clark in 2017 and were like, look, here's how we see Halo beauty being this overall overarching global brand. Tell me what you think. Does the name say to you overall beauty brand or does it say to you supplements? G Clark is alleging that it was going to be a global beauty brand with Supplements, skincare, cosmetics, fragrance, and more. Allegedly, Tati said to Clark she wanted to build her brand under one umbrella rather than just do vitamins. She wanted to expand Halo Beauty to include a wet line, cosmetics, and skincare. Halo Beauty had the potential to expand to become a huge standalone brand. She hoped that Clark was ready to build a brand, not just a bottle of vitamins, the whole big thing. Tati allegedly said that she didn't want to be perceived as a mere spokesperson or celebrity endorser. She wanted Halo Beauty to be her company, that she wanted to be an equal shareholder. And under the current ownership structure where she only had a 25% interest and her husband had a 25% interest and Clark had a 50% interest, she wanted the ownership to be more structured more equally. So it was not that she was just a minor part of the company, but she was a owner, CEO, boss bitch of the company. And that's when they proposed that one third to everybody structure. They were selling Clark on the financial benefits of the inclusive brand. E-commerce based beauty businesses were being acquired by major beauty brands for eye popping amounts. This was interesting to me. <laughs> this was there. I made a, I made a note. This was very interesting to me. Tati told Clark that Jeffrey Starr, who's a potential advisor for her cosmetics brand, was offered $500 million by L'Oreal for his company. I wonder I wonder if Jeffrey wishes he had taken it. Because this is back in, what, 2017? I wonder if he's looking back going, he pro you know what? He probably made more than that off of the conspiracy launch, right? Right? Anyway, I thought it was interesting that L'Oreal offered to purchase Jeffree Star Cosmetics. Miss Westbrook stated that um, he thought the company as an all-inclusive brand could reach a $3 billion valuation. Mm -hmm. $3 billion. This, this is the kind of company they're looking to build, a $3 billion brand. Tati boasted that her celebrity status would guarantee success. She said, I know as far as our repeat customer, it doesn't matter. What I put my name on is going to work. It's going to sell, period, because of the seven years I put into an audience and bragged, allegedly, that the product didn't matter. She could still sell a shit product to her loyal followers. I, my comment on this is rude. It's also really irrelevant. They're going to argue, well, this goes to the false um, promises. This goes to how much he was sold on reducing his part of the company. But it's also going to disparage Tati, right? There's two purposes of putting this statement in this complaint. It's to show, look, she promised all these big things, but it's also to dime her the fuck out in this complaint that's going to be talked about online, like I'm doing right now. So she also touted her clique of fellow influencers, which is interesting. She said that her friends were the most influential on YouTube and would cross-promote her products. She related that some of them, like Jeffree Star, Manny MUA, James Charles, and Laura Lee, were launching or preparing to launch their own cosmetics line, that they would want Tati to promote their products, which she would. 
naturally. And she in return could expect that they would give their endorsements to her products as well. We didn't really see any of them endorsing Halo Beauty, did we? And this is before Dramageddon 1 when Jeffree Star Manny and Laura Lee had that massive falling out and the beauty industry kind of imploded. Can you imagine if you're a business individual like Clark seems to be a business dude and your business value, brand value and worth is is possible to be torpedoed by YouTube drama. Like YouTube drama can completely torpedo your own business, your whole business. Like, oh, well, I've got all these, you know, friends, Jeffree Star, Manny MUA, James Charles, Laura Lee. Yeah, none of y'all are friends anymore. So Clark was investing on a business that is completely blown up because the beauty industry is completely blown up. It's just so interesting, right? Because at the time, this was such huge money. And now we're seeing these brands um, struggle a bit. I mean, it is COVID, but I think that the drama in the beauty industry has had an impact on these businesses just from outside perception. Clark's attorney puts in the complaint that Tati was sitting at her dining room table one night with Laura, Manny, James, and Jeffrey. And Jeffrey disclosed that Sugar Bear Hair was offering $200,000 to him for a promotional video. $200,000. And Jeffrey Star doesn't even wear his real hair. I mean, back then he kind of did. He doesn't anymore. It's all wigs now. But back then he was growing out his hair and going through kind of those videos with the hair, um, hairline surgery and stuff, offering him two. dollars hundred thousand dollars for a sugar pear hair video now we know what jeffrey was being offered for promotional videos <laughs> i bet sugar bear hair is not offering that right now just saying tati also told clark that she asked these influencers not to endorse sugar bear hair because she was launching launching a competing skin hair and nails vitamin and all the influencers turned down sugar bear hair but wait there's a footnote. This is where the T is. There's a footnote. Miss Westbrook's claim to influence was undercut when James Charles endorsed Sugar Bear Hair in an April 22nd, 2019 swipe up Instagram story. On May 10th, 2019, Miss Westbrook posted a video by sister accusing Charles of an inappropriate sexual scandal. <laughs> YouTube T. I think that, oh, no, that wasn't the, there's another footnote that continues. But can we see now if this is true and Clark signed an affidavit, I'm affirming that this is true. Sign an affidavit. This is true. These conversations happened. We only have that affidavit to go on. There's no examination. This is like my remember my remembering of this. Though if this went to trial, oh my God, to be in the depositions with James Charles and Manny MUA and Laura Lee. So were you sitting around a table talking about sugar bear hair and Tati asked you explicitly not to promote sugar bear hair? And then are we going to see sugar bear hair suing Tati for interference in business relations? Things I ponder on. Either way, um, Miss Westbrook's claimed influence was undercut when James Charles endorsed sugar bear hair. So Tati, this, this, gets into a little more of the underlying of Tati's rage towards James, right? Because she's telling a business partner, I have this influence. Like she is literally peddling her own influence saying, I have this influence over myself and my friends. And then James is like, but Coachella. <laughs> and it undercuts her word, right? And so I can see where she's so mad because in that Bi Sisters video, she was furious and then lashed out with the James, you're not living right. But now we can see some of the backstory about why she's so mad because she made promises too. And her friends were like, no, no, we got you. We'll we'll just promote Halo. We won't promote Sugar Bear Hair. And James was like, but I need Coachella tickets and Sugar Bear hooked me up. Like it's no biggie. We can see why it's such a biggie to Tati, can't we? Yup. <sighs> so this all goes into why Clark decided to give up his 50% share in the company and go to a third. Cause he's saying, okay, a third of a larger company is a third of a larger company versus 50% of a smaller company. So now it's a third of the all inclusive new brand. He sent an email 
And of course, if you go to court, this email is going to come into court, come into play. Um, this is talking about this August 1st, 2017 conversation. This email states in part, and one has to assume that the lawyer has this email and has read this, and this is a direct clip out of the email. On August 1st, 2017, we arrived at a new understanding and agreement between the partners. As follows, Clark will reduce his equity ownership from 50% to 33.33. The partners agree that James and Tati will collectively own 66.66 of the equity ownership. The new ownership therefore agreed to be divided in equal parts, being that Tati Westbrook is the owner of 33, James is the owner of 33, and Clark is the owner of 33. There's more to that email. It is agreed that the goal of the partners is to build an exclusive global beauty brand. This brand will develop and manufacture products for the beauty industry. We will initially begin with the launch of a food supplement line of business currently contemplated to be comprised of five different products, calming stress relief, weight management, hair, skin, and nails, etc. The first of the product line launch is the hair, nail, and skin booster. The product aptly featuring XO, XO's Toddy will be promoted by Toddy Westbrook on our YouTube channel. Additional consideration was made to the other channel proprietor, to other channel proprietor promotional efforts, particularly those that are within the business relationship network of Toddy Westbrook, deemed to be product collaborations with other YouTube influencers. But what it doesn't say, it gets into the first launch, but it doesn't talk about any other launches. I'd be very interested where that information is, like where it's spelled out, because it's not spelled out here. It's It doesn't say, yes, it says global beauty brand, but it doesn't list any other types of products in this email. And that could become consequential. The articles of incorporation and bylaws of the company were updated that um, the board of directors would not engage in other business activities that materially interfere with the members or officers services to the corporation that competes with the natural suticals line of the corporation. That means other vitamins and supplements or any personal investment activities in enterprises that directly compete with the corporation. But if the corporation's just the pharmaceuticals does a does an eyeshadow palette compete? So this in context is going to be very important. I imagine if there was an email laying out that they anticipated cosmetics and skincare and all of it, it would be in this complaint because so much else is. Just, just a pondering, just a pondering. <laughs> then they get into the uh, consensus partners the business will require consensus from the partners regarding all major or material business decisions for further clarification. That includes divestiture of stock, pledge of assets or shares of loans, additional issuance of shares, property and equipment obligations, intellectual property applications or assignments, or things that would require a reasonable person to consider material in the business. What Clark is going to argue is the option for Tati to start other lines of business should have been decided by a consensus of the partners, meaning he should have had a say if she was considering doing other products because those are going to directly compete with Halo. But what I imagine Tati and James will argue is we didn't do anything that directly competes with Halo because Halo is vitamins. So then they go into the Halo Beauty launch and how wonderful it is. And when they launched it, the patent application, who did the patent application, there was a lawyer somewhere that sat and watched all of the videos on Tati's channel, which is clear to me. <laughs> that was somebody's work day or work days that it's like, oh, what did you do today at work? Uh, yeah, I watched YouTube videos of Tati Westbrook for my partner and like wrote down everything she said about Halo Beauty as a brand, her brand makeup, her makeup line, because <laughs> they definitely pull out quite a lot of clips from different YouTube videos. So they get into her February 27th, 2018 video talking about my brand, talking about um, Halo as an all-inclusive brand for all of us. So she talked about the skin, hair, and hail, the skin, hair, and nail booster, beauty with the inside out. She said, we're starting with beauty from the inside out. 
She also said, I did decide ultimately to put everything under Halo. Everything would be one. I thought, why not? We can start with vitamins and we can go into skincare and we can go into color cosmetics and it's my business so I can do that. I don't have to have different names for them. The fact that she said that in a video is going to be evidence that what Clark is saying and his understanding of what Halo Beauty as a brand was is what the understanding is. That's why they're putting this in here. And that's where this video is going to come in of, but you said this to your following, showing that that's what was in your mind as well to show that Clark's understanding of what Halo was and Tati's understanding of what Halo was were the same based on the things she said in her videos. So that video will come in. And if it goes to jury trial, a jury will watch that YouTube video. And this one, this get ready with me, Halo Beauty launch day. And she was saying um, Halo would be keeping Halo a good and pure inclusive brand, that it was launching other things. Um, and that inclusivity is going to come up in every video where she talks about Halo. Uh, some attorney has watched it, transcribed it, and is going to have it all cataloged, ready for a jury to watch. So with regard to the Halo Beauty launch, Halo Beauty earned its owners over a million dollars each in distributions. That means that each of the person oh, each of the people who owned the company got over a million for their third. So over 3 million in profit after all of the expenses and all of the stuff that the company had to pay that those were their distributions over and above all of the expenses and what have you. Um in 2019, the company, I always love the money stuff. So you'll always see me talk about the money stuff because I'm always curious about the money stuff because I'm a nosy bitch. In 2019, the company distributed to its owners almost three times what was distributed in 2018. So just under $3 million each in 2019 on the vitamins. So just under $3 million to James, just under $3 million to Tati, just under $3 million to Clark. So now in two years, they've each made ish $4 million from Halo Beauty. So this is Mr. Swanson's hard work to expand Halo Beauty products. And this in 2018 is where we start seeing in this complaint push pull between Tati seemingly exploring Tati Beauty and the, the eyeshadow palette on her own and Halo Beauty with Clark going, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing with Halo? And that's what this next bit of the complaint really gets into. On July 6, 2018, Clark sent James a text message saying, when are we making a makeup line? I thought we were doing ingestibles, then skincare, then cosmetics color, question mark. Tati mentioned this on her video last week regarding it being a ways off. So something in one of her videos got Clark thinking about what was going on and was asking, hey, what's up, what's up, what's up? Excuse me. <laughs> in November 2018, Swanson was meeting with cosmetics development laboratories about skincare. Um, Tati and James didn't show up to the meetings, didn't show interest in the meetings. It seems that the Westbrooks, he's alleging the Westbrooks were actively now not engaging in moving Halo Beauty forward. This is in 2018. So in 2018, Clark was asked by YouTube influencer Michelle Fan to join her for a launch, uh, to join her for lunch to discuss prospective business in China. When the Westbrooks learned about the meeting, they insisted that it be canceled. Apparently, James said to Clark on the phone, I demand you stand down. Stand down! Stand down! Such dramatic language. And then they go into who uh, Michelle Fan is you know, with her 1 billion lifetime views, 385 videos, founder and owner of, oh, this is the footnote that goes on, a cosmetics line, and it goes into who she is and the fact that they told him that they he couldn't get into business with Michelle. Now, this is going to go into the fact that if this launch was a perspective like cosmetics launch, and if the 
gist of this is that Tati and James thought that that cosmetic launch would interfere with Halo Beauty, then it again leans towards the belief that they thought Halo Beauty was going to be an all-encompassing beauty brand and that Michelle Fan's launch could be a competitor to Halo Beauty and that as a member of this company, they couldn't do anything that competed with the company. That's all going to get into these fiduciary duty arguments saying everyone was on the same page that this was an all encompassing brand until James and Tati got greedy and split it off into Tati beauty. That's the argument here showing that, look, this was a threat to the company. So now we know that they expected the company to be competing in the beauty sphere if that was a beauty project. Now it goes on to say there was never any further discussion of the products and there's no way to know what um, Miss Fan chose to do with that product or project. But it did cut into the fact that she raised a hundred million, um, raised over a hundred million to value the company Ipsy at over five hundred million. I'm very. I didn't know she was involved in Ipsy. Fascinating how much money there is in the YouTube beauty space, right? So. <laughs> Getting, getting back to the meeting, twenty October 2018, there's an email to James and Tati asking about the cosmetics launch, um, the fact that Borgio had offered Tati an equity interest in the company and a seat on the board, and then the Michelle Fan project. Um, they said that the, the focus needed to be on additional products and supplements, that Tati was not considering the Borgio opportunity and moving on. But all of these emails, again, would come will come into court if this goes to trial. <sighs> the launch of Tati Beauty. <laughs> Clark is saying that they actively deceived him and didn't tell him that Tati Beauty was moving forward. On December 16th, 2018, Clark asked again for James to go meet with Cosmetic Enterprises about moving the skincare forward. James declined, saying it's a really bad week for a field trip, bro. I'd prefer if you not do this alone. I can't emphasize enough. Tati needs to take the lead on this. Pull back. I feel you. I love your enthusiasm, but this isn't a ball for you to carry. So, hey, Clark, stop pushing this forward. Apparently, he replied, no worries. I'm very excited about our company. I have no doubt Tati will crush it on the lineup for skincare. If I haven't told you already enough times, I'm also, as your brother, so proud to be on this journey with you and Tati. And moreover, keeping the cosmetics under Halo Beauty and including me is a sign of amazing collaboration and kinship. My gratitude to be your best friend is high five symbol five emoji. And then, <laughs> and then Clark believes that that was a misleading attempt to keep him from exploring more into Halo Beauty. So then we get into January 2019. Tati is still set, telling YouTube viewers that she's the CEO of Halo and a lot of passion for the brand and is going to go in every direction possible, launching innovative products, developing skincare and makeup is what she told her viewers. Again, it'll all come into court. So now we're in April 2019. James contacts Clark and says he wants to meet about the Tati business development, not tragic, just better in person. And then says Halo Beauty is going in a different direction. And that Tati had already contracted with Seed Beauty to develop color cosmetics. So the deal was already done. You guys, these business deals don't happen quick. These are these are conversations that are three months, six months, sometimes a year or more. This is not like a, oh yeah, let's sign a deal. These are very long negotiations. And at some point, legal for seed would have been like, do you have any competing or should have been? Do you have any competing contracts that would preclude you from doing this? So at some point, what was said to Seed Beauty is also going to become relevant because did Tati and James tell them, oh yeah, well, we have Halo, but it's not, it's not a thing? Did no one's lawyers say this might be a problem? Very curious as to how all this went down. James explained that he did not think Halo was the right vehicle for color cosmetics, and that the founder of Seed Beauty contacted Tati directly and made them an offer too good to refuse. 
Rather than competing with Halo Beauty, the Westbrook's new ventures would somehow bolster the reputation of Halo Beauty is what they're telling Clark. Like, no, no, it's all going to be great, I imagine, is how that went. It's all going to be great. It's fine. It's fine. Clark was pissed. (laughs) He was not happy at all. He protested it. He said that he would have never given up the equity, which, I mean, he gave up 50% of the company to a third of the company. He would have never given up the 50% equity if it hadn't been an all-inclusive brand, which is something that a behavior that lends towards the fact that there was an understanding, at least by him, that that's how it was. That doesn't mean when two sides of a conversation have a conversation that they both take away the same thing. I've seen this happen in partnerships over and over and over again, where they're like, wait, no, that's not what we meant. And it's, yes, that's what we meant. We had the conversation. So people's understanding of what was agreed to, this is why lawyers are so important, because making sure both sides of a party understand what they agreed to is critical. Days before the Tati Palette was launched, he was still trying to resolve the dispute. I don't know what he was going to do at that point, but Tati wouldn't talk to him, citing her mental state. If you've seen a Tati video when she's going through hard times, those are actually the words that she uses. Just from the videos I've seen, just saying. Tati Beauty launched. Tati Beauty sold um, sold out of the total units of the initial run. They took pre-orders for a second run. To present, Clark estimates that Tati Beauty revenues are somewhere in excess of $16 million. Revenues. That doesn't mean profit. That means total revenue brought in. There's still expenses and stuff to come out of that, but $16 million is clearly nothing to shake a stick at. And that's why this lawsuit has come up. Like if Tati Beauty was a total flop, nobody would spend the money on the lawyers to bring this shit to court, right? So even after launching Tati Beauty, the Westbrooks refused to launch Halo Beauty skincare products. And this goes into their active refusal to nail down a skincare line and to release any more products. It looks like from what Clark's perspective is, he was trying to get the skincare line off the ground and Tati and James were putting on the brakes. They hired Benchmark Cosmetics Laboratory to formulate it, um, a setting spray and a makeup primer. They were designed with ingredients from the Halo Beauty supplements, but the Westbrook's never gave an okay on the samples and the company requires all three of them to agree to go product to go forward and there are still no new product launches planned so for companies that are growing in this industry you're going to see regular product launches and that's what you got that first year with halo beauty they have four different types of supplements so you saw the product line move forward and then it's just been a complete stalemate since those initial products were launched. And this is part of the complaint of you are undercutting Halo by focusing on Tati Beauty. And you, James and Tati, owe Halo a legal duty to not do things against Halo's best interest. And you're breaching that duty by fucking around over here with Tati Beauty is essentially the argument. (laughs) So Just months after the launch of Tati Beauty in October 2019, James told Clark not to promote Halo Beauty sales for the rest of the year, claiming that Halo should just coast for the year. So they spent their time and energy on Tati Beauty and ignored Halo Beauty. In 2020, the Westbrooks have continued to cut Halo Beauty out of future opportunities like fragrance products. So then they get into um, fragrance and wanting to do fragrance and who should do fragrance. It hasn't been done. I think with all of the buy sister, high sister, whatever stuff, it'll be interesting to see if Tati launches a new product, but I would be surprised. They said in February, late February 2020, James told Clark that they were spurred by their new talent agency, UTA, to launch a fragment fragrance product in collaboration with a New York based marketing and manufacturing firm, and that it was Tati's idea and she wanted to do it all on her own without. Clark and without James, just her. And I don't, did she mention fragrance in her last video? She might have. I can't remember if she mentioned fragrance in the last video. Let me know in the comments if she did. I'm going to go back and watch it. Um, so that's, 
that's the tea. We're going to get to the end of this. I pro- I told you to grab a snack. I promise we're wrapping up. <laughs> Part of Clark's beef is that he and James have been talking about a fragrance since April 25th, 2018, talking about the profits in the Kardashian fragrance line and the, the margins there. And so on March 31st, Clark emailed James about fragrance. This was March 31st, 2020. So not, well, I mean, it's long ago now, but not all that long ago. Saying, Tati Fragrance is a product line that we contemplated when we formed Halo. And again, when I gave you and Tati the controlling interest in the business, even if you are right that Tati Fragrance could be good for Halo, there is no way it is better for Halo than have than having Halo own and operate the fragrance piece of the business. As an officer member owner of Halo, I don't think that any of us could claim in good faith that any other course of action would be in the best interest of Halo. Please reconsider in light of Tati and your obligations to Halo. So this is again pointing out the fiduciary responsibility to Halo, the fact that he gave up the controlling interest in Halo to them for this promise and I think we're seeing a little bit of this relationship souring and a little bit of a last ditch. Like, are we moving forward with this? Now, James and Tati are distributing funds away from Halo to devalue the company. They say they're looting the company in advance of a lawsuit. It's been known to happen. There, If there's evidence of that, it will come out. It will not look good for Tati and James. You can't just distribute to some of the shareholders and not to the others. So there's a whole lot of rules around that. And if that is true, it's going to be very problematic. So this gets into all the shareholder derivation allegations, which is just saying that shareholders have not been treated equally. This is also getting into all of the notice of the shareholders, which the shareholders of the company are James, Tati, and Clark. These are all the different causes of actions down here. The breach of duty from Swanson to Tati and James and Halo. And each of these causes of actions are alleging basically the same set of facts that were above, that the Tati and James are not acting in the best interest of Halo Beauty, that Tati and James are not upholding their legal responsibility to be fiduciaries of the company, and that Halo Beauty Partners LLC and its disinterested members did not give consent to the division of these corporate opportunities for personal gain. That is the heart of this whole thing. Clark and the company never said, you can go do these other ventures. What will be argued, I would imagine, by Tati and James is that, no, we had only agreed to the beauty. But there are things in this complaint that indicate the thought of a bigger overarching scheme. The thing is, when you're in a company like this, you can't just do stuff. This gets into the negligence claims by delaying and impeding the work of Halo, delaying and impeding efforts to market Halo, um, failing to implement corporate opportunities, failing to continue to launch, failing to continue to promote. Tati has shut down her YouTube channel. So if part of her duty to Halo is to continue to promote it using YouTube, she hasn't done that. She has shut down her YouTube channel due to all of the fallout from the drama. What, a year, over a year ago now? You can't just shut down your marketing of a business for a year. You're obligated to continue to act in the best interest of that business. Whether they then picked up other marketing for the business, I don't know. But if their whole marketing plan was Tati's got a YouTube channel, then her shutting down her YouTube channel for a year is problematic if that's part of her obligation to the company. And in this case, it seems like that there is a reasonable connection between her YouTube channel and Halo Beauty based on what we've seen her do on her YouTube channel. This gets into different types of negligence based on the same facts. These are all different ways that the same facts are problematic is what this is saying. And then the fraudulent misrepresentations are the changing the company from 50 to 33. There's there's paperwork to this. If he had a 50% interest and now has a 33% interest, there's going to be corporate documents that show it. There's the emails that show it. That's not going to be hard to show. What's going to be hard to show is exactly what was promised for that change in share. And that's what's going to be one of the hinges of this case is what was promised to make him change from 50 to 33%. And then the breach of contracts, breach of good faith, promissory, (laughs) 
Promissory estoppel. <laughs> Promissory estoppel is some deeply nerdy law school level shit. And it's just saying, you promised me something. And so I did something detrimental to me going from 50% to 33%. I did something detrimental to me and you're not keeping up your end of the promise. And that's bullshit. So as opposed to a breach of contract, it's more of a breach of a verbal contract, a breach of a promised agreement. Hopefully that makes sense on promissory stuff. The t- it's been a long ass time since your girl's been <laughs> since your girl's been like, oh, promissory estoppel, of course. But that's exactly what that is. It's it's I promise you that Halo's gonna have all of these things. If this is true, I promise you that Halo's gonna exclusively launch everything that I do. And for that, you're going to give me a greater percentage in the company. You're gonna take a smaller percentage of the company. Well, that happened. There is going to be paperwork that proved that that happened. There's no reason to doubt that that exchange the 50 to the 33 didn't happen. It's what the promise was that this is all going to come down on. Unjust enrichment means you benefited yourself illegally at the detriment of me and the company. Um, And then aiding and abetting the breach of fiduciary duty is saying these other companies, which is where the money is, these other companies knew because the members knew these other companies knew that there was an obligation to halo beauty and said, yeah, we don't care. We're going to go over here and do Tati beauty. So we're helping Tati and James because companies are a person. We're helping Tati and James breach their duty to halo by going over here and different companies, same charges, same cause of action. Again, different aiding and abetting the duty of good faith and fair dealing. This is that, siphoning away of opportunities. And again, that promise for the 50% to the 33% that, that James Tati and their companies interfered with all the plaintiff's rights to enjoy the benefits of that business by siphoning off that Tati Cosmetics, which is controlled by the West Westbrooks posed actual and possessed actual and constructive knowledge and getting into the into the breakdown of the argument that because the Tati Cosmetics businesses are owned by James and Tati, that those businesses had knowledge of the business dealings with Halo because it's all Tati and James at the end of the day. (laughs) Conversion is another deeply, deeply nerdy law school term. And in this case, the conversion, meaning I've taken away something that's yours and made it my own, is the money taken out of the business, (laughs) is the chattel. This is the wrongful distribution of sums. And that's James Westbrook distributing hundreds of thousands of dollars to the members of Halo Beauty Partners LLC um, for his own benefit. So pulling money out of the company wrongfully and converting it to their own funds is where that's coming up. The relief requested is punitive damages. That's like pay a lot of money because you suck and you did stuff wrong. Injunctive damage, which can be the court saying you can't launch any more products. You can't do anything else until this is resolved. Another equitable relief where the court can say, okay, fine, we're going to put maybe all of the Tati Beauty companies back under Halo Beauty. But the damage is already kind of done, right? Because Tati's already done the damage to her business with all of the other YouTube drama stuff. So I don't even know if that would be considered relief at this point. Because she's been off YouTube for so long, she definitely doesn't carry the weight in that sphere that she used to. And imposed a constructive trust over profits realized by defendants owed to plaintiffs. So that is taking that money back and having the court distribute, essentially demand for trial. And then this is the verification. Again, Clark made an affidavit swearing that this was true. Um, On October 15th, he swore it in Nevada. It seems that that's where he lives. And um, this was filed in Santa Monica, California. And that's a very long legal breakdown. I hope you enjoyed the tea. (laughs) I forgot to do the YouTube things. I'm pushing towards 5,000 subscribers. So I would really appreciate it if you like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Of course, you're welcome to connect with me in the comments below. I also open up my text for you guys. I asked you in text if you wanted to hear about this lawsuit and you were like, yes, girl, spill the tea. I asked you on social. I'm the Emily D. Baker all over social media. 
like, subscribe, hit the bell, and I will see you again in the next one. Hope you're having a good one wherever this video finds you.